Cashflow Diary Podcast, episode 119. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. The podcast that teaches you insider tips, tactics, and strategies for creating leverage streams of cash flow into your life. Learn from top performing entrepreneurs, business owners, investors, and thought leaders from across the globe as they share their secrets to success. Like what you learn on this and other Cash Flow Diary podcast episodes? Go to learninvestingnow.com and sign up to receive powerful tips and information that will help you succeed as an entrepreneur and investor. Now, here's your host, investor, entrepreneur, business owner, educator, speaker, author, and master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow game, Jay Massey. All right, and welcome to another episode of the Cash Flow Diary podcast. And guess what, guys? I'm excited again. You're like, Jay, we knew that already. Well, here's the point. I'm excited because oftentimes what you're, what we're seeking, we're looking for those shortcuts. We're looking for those ideas. We're looking for, hey, how can I do in one year what it took someone else to do in 10? And that's one of the reasons I know that you guys come here. But most importantly, today's guest has an inside view because she has had the privilege of interviewing some of today's biggest, brightest, and most successful who are out there. And I'm guessing She's got a one, two, probably even three super secret ninja secrets just for you so that you can go out there and make things happen. I am glad that I get to interview so many different people. And most importantly, they all have different energy, different ideas. And I'm hoping that you gain something today that you came here to find. And more importantly, that you share it with a friend or, you know, 12. So today's guest has appeared on many different networks and shows that you would probably actually recognize if you know of CNN, MSN, Success Magazine, Yahoo's homepage multiple times. Here's the thing. She's even authored the book, The Eventual Millionaire. And I love the title because it's not overnight, people. It can happen. It doesn't mean it's going to happen tomorrow, but it can begin. If you don't know who I'm talking about, that's okay. Welcome, Miss Jamie Tardy. Jamie, you there? I am here. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. You know, I am excited and I love it when there are individuals out there who are not only doing something unique, but also finding those secrets, those resources that help other people. So, but before we get into, you know, what you do today, one of the questions that I've got to ask you know, before you had the opportunity to interview all of these individuals, before you were able to go out there and get access to some of the secrets of today's biggest and brightest, I'm, I want to know something because I think of today's entrepreneurs just like yesterday's superheroes. You know, you got Wonder Woman and Spider-Man and, and all these things, you know, uh, out there. But before they were those great people, they had an alter ego. They were just normal people. And I think we as entrepreneurs are the same. So before you are the, the, the superhero you are today, I would love to know, who is Jamie Tardy? First of all, I love that. I'm a huge geek and like huge comic book fan. So <laughs> relaying me to a superhero makes me extremely happy. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Thank we'll talk you. about your favorite and whether Superman and Batman can win later. Ooh, but uh, Yeah, that'd now. be a debate. <laughs> I <know>. uh, <laughs> So I would say it's funny. Um, I did a speaking gig not that long ago and one of my mom's friends was in the audience and she looked at me and came up after and goes, Jamie, I've changed your diapers when you were a baby. I never in a million years would have thought that you would be up on stage in front of a whole bunch of people. And I was like, really? She's like, you were the mousy girl that was drawing. I was voted most artistic, actually, in high school and uh, reading over in the corner, not wanting to talk to anyone, which wow. is hilarious because now people call me like the best networker and like my network is insane and amazing. But I was I was a total introvert. I didn't really don't get me wrong. I was always an overachiever. I love achievement. I always want to do things fast as humanly possible, as young as humanly possible. Uh, mm -hmm. But it, I let myself and my confidence stop me for many, many, many years. I did what was supposed to be the right way and the easy way for way too long until I sort of got slapped in the face and was like, wait a minute, what am I doing with my life? Why am I so unhappy? And I was going for a million even since I was little. I don't know why. I was eight and I wanted to be a millionaire, which is I know kind of weird. Um, but I went the tradition 
traditional path and, and thought that was the only way to do it. So I was sort of chugging along until I realized, hey, wait, if you don't enjoy your life, then money doesn't matter anyway, right? <laughs> it does make it uh, difficult. Although you could buy a lot of comic books. I did, too. <laughs> <laughs> It didn't help. I didn't have any time to read them. <laughs> no, no doubt, right? You got this big old stack in the corner. You're like, one day I'm going to make some time. I got to put it on my schedule. <laughs> exactly. So the, the I guess the question is, is what would you call that that moment? You know, uh, Peter Parker had the moment where he was bit by the spider. You know, Superman crashes the earth and he's got all these moments where he realizes, oh, my God, I'm someone special. I've got someone uh, some something to offer. And it's time for me to go out there and swoop down and save people. Uh, what was that? You know, your we'll call it your superhero moment uh, where you you realize that, hey, I, I can make a difference and this is something I should pursue and do. Mm, that I, I talk about it as my catalyst moment and it didn't have anything to do with me being smart or anything like that. So I, I've been told over and over, you should work for yourself. You should do this. You should do that. Uh, you should quit your job if you hate it. Right. And I was like, yeah, I get that. But <laughs> <laughs> yes, I like I eating. I've but gotten used to that. Right. I know. Exactly. <laughs> mm, I've got, I was in $70,000 in debt too. Uh, and the breadwinner and I'm like, yep. Yeah, but uh, bills. Thank you very much. Right? And the only thing that made me step outside of that and get outside of my comfort zone is I wanted to have a baby. And having something outside myself and going, wait a minute, do I want my child coming into the world with a mom who is never there because she's working 70 hours a week, uh, trying to get to this wealth goal that doesn't really matter in the end anyway, right? <laughs> and, and miserable, right? And and having that and going, no way in heck. I used to leave on Monday and come home on Friday. And I was like, well, there's no way I could do that with a baby. Shoot, what the heck am I going to do now? <laughs> right? And so, but that was a huge catalyst moment. And unfortunately, it wasn't just me going, yes, let's do this. It was something outside of myself. And sometimes we just need that to be able to make that switch and that mental change. Because right after that, I went and paid off $70,000 in 16 months. Right? So having that end goal, that huge, big, hairy, audacious goal where you're like, well, really want to do it. Got to do it as fast as I can. And I just dove right in. And that really started up leveling my confidence uh, and more and more and more like, okay, I think I can do this. Because I couldn't find any stories like mine on the uh, online beforehand. My son is now seven, almost eight. And uh, there weren't blogs like there were before. So nobody had a, I quit my six figure job <laughs> and paid off $70,000 in debt. And my husband at the time was a professional juggler. Right. So I was like, yeah, nobody's like this. And so once I did it, and it's so amazing to be on the other side and be able to tell the story. Now it sounds super easy too. Like, oh, I paid off seventy thousand dollars in sixteen months to quit my job. Blah, blah, right. So right. easy for me to say. It was hell going through it, of course. Of course. Um, <laughs> you know, we gloss over that right now. Uh, but uh, having that and really up leveled my confidence of going. Wait a minute. I dug in and I did that. And that's where the change in me started happening. And it only got more and more and more as I found amazing mentors and people that were willing to put in their time and effort and kick me in the butt a bit. Because, <laughs> yeah. you know, everybody's got excuses. Uh, and that's what really started to level me up. Got it. I love that so much. I mean, you if if we you would see the goosebumps on my skin right now. I'm just like, yes, this is the stuff. Because it and notice I want everyone to notice something. It doesn't even matter what she does yet because you don't even know. We haven't even had that conversation. <laughs> the point is, is that we are going to go through some of the same things and then we get to exercise our genius in certain industries. And that's what gets exciting for me is that the path is very, very clear. You can listen to many different entrepreneurs. They're all going to say very similar things. We all start in different places. We're all given different reasons that we could call excuses, but they eventually become the very foundation as why we choose to go out there and succeed. So I've got a question. You said it was external motivation. Well, external motivation, at least in my experience, can only take me so far. And there, at some point, it's got to switch where, because if you don't have that cheering section behind you, and if everything isn't going right, and you're like, oh my God, maybe I should just quit, external motivation usually doesn't last long enough to, to make that work. So I, what did you do? to overcome those obstacles that you've faced in the past? Mm. Well, I see it almost as twofold, right? So it's not only just the external piece. Um, me being a mom yeah. and wanting to be a shining example. 
nice. for my children, right? I have a son and a daughter now who's five. And uh, looking at them, I remember my mom and my dad would always tell me to work for myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, neither of them did. So my dad tried and it didn't work out so well for him. And, uh, but they kept pushing, you should do it. I'm like, well, we didn't work for you. Why should I do it? <laughs> right. Which stopped me a lot from, from trying to push forward, even though I had quite a few friends that had worked for themselves. I was like, no, 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 I make way more money corporate, you know? And so, so having that, um, inner why of like, okay, I need to show my children the type of person I want them to become willing to go after your dreams, willing to get outside your comfort zone, willing to push and live life really to the fullest. Because when we only have one life and I'm so interested in like the singularity and the future of technology and how this goes, and I would love to live forever, right? Or maybe not forever, maybe, you know, a couple hundred years, (laughs) but we don't, right? We don't have that capability right now. And to squeeze every last essence of the life that we have is extremely important to me. And so that was what was getting me through the paying off the debt and that sort of thing. Yeah. It, but then, but then I paid off the debt and I was like, great. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now what? Now what? Right. Exactly. <laughs> I still want to be a shining example, but I didn't know exactly what to shine in. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. Can someone give me some polish, but I don't exactly. know where I'm putting it. But there's a great book called you could, I could do anything I want if I just knew what it was. It, it makes right? perfect By sense. By Barbara Sher. And, and I remember reading that book and I also read, uh, you know, Dan Miller's 48 Days to the Work You Love. And sort of a side note, it's funny, Dan Miller actually wrote the foreword in my book. And I remember reading his book way back when, when I had no idea what the heck I was going to do. And it's so interesting to sort of come, I mean, seriously, that was only, you know, seven years ago, which I guess is a long time, but, um, but looking at it, and going, now Dan's a friend of mine. Like he just emailed me the other day. <laughs> I'm like, he randomly emails me. This man who is like this huge force in my life is now a friend of mine is just insane. So anyway, side note of how that goes. But but the other piece is figuring out that um, changing other people's lives is really what now motivates me, right? So don't get me wrong. I, I still want to be a shining example for my children. Uh, but doing what I do now and changing people's lives and getting the emails of people that I've never even met before saying you changed my life or a simple introduction has changed people's lives. Like that's, I mean, that's where it's at, at least for me. Like I just want more of that. It's like a drug (laughs) as much as I possibly can get of that makes me really, really happy. You know, what's funny is that uh, you and I are very similar in that same aspect. I mean, uh, as I've said many times to many people, my goal was to feed my family. I wanted to Eat. That was it. That's a very powerful motivator and will take the most introverted of us. And yes, that means you going out there to do things that you would never think you would do or could do simply because you had to. And the question is, because I, I ran into that same situation, it's like, okay, now that we can eat, what's next? And it, it became a, you know, a many different series of things. And I love what you're saying here, Uh, specifically the idea about parents, because I know as many, you know, having four children myself, uh, I'm like, one of the things that was important to me is that all the times I hear parents say, and I'm just wondering if this is true for you. I hear parents say, you can go be whatever you want. You can go do this. You can be a president. You can blah, 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 whatever. But yet the parent themselves are often not doing the very thing that they're saying that their child could do. And that's what I wanted. I wanted to at least say, I tried. I wanted to at least be able to have my kids look and go, okay, dad tried. Maybe it worked. Maybe it didn't work. Maybe some things went up and down. But at least I know when my dad says, hey, go out there and try. Go out there and become. Go out there and tell the world that you've got something special to offer um, that I can do it. Mm. Which brings up the whole idea of winning when we're scared, any excuse will do when we're scared. And for you, I, I can see how, you know, looking at your parents, that, that, was a, that was a challenge. I'm curious to know is how did you get the courage to overcome that particular challenge? Because you're, you're, you, that's an internal battle that ha- many of us have to wrestle with of becoming this new person. We're like, oh, I don't know if I can be this new person. Uh, we may want the benefits of that. But how do we, how did you manage to overcome those particular challenges? 
There's a lot that goes into that question. Um, because when I quit my job, I mean, I was, I made six figures when I was 22. So I thought I was awesome way back when, right? <laughs> like, look at me. I flew around. I had an expense account. Like, hi, I'm awesome. As soon as you quit that, I realized how much my identity was wrapped up in it. <laughs> like, oh, now I'm not the overachiever, the breadwinner, the whatever these labels are that we put on ourselves. Right. And so that took a lot of like, oh, feeling sick to my stomach of going, well, I hope whatever this is actually works because I derived a lot of happiness from achievement, which was something really interesting to learn about myself. Um, and when I was at that place, the only thing that I could do to sort of push past that is to plan and create contingency plans to go, okay, if this doesn't work, what's going to happen? So when I quit, I mean, I had six months of emergency fund saved up. Mm. So I went, okay, worst comes to worst. We're going to do this. We're going to have six months or, or, um, more if we could bring in any sort of income at all. Mm -hmm. Then if that doesn't work, uh, I'm totally fine with selling the house. Then if that doesn't work, you know what I mean? So as we started going through, I was like, okay, so contingency plans, worst comes to worst. Maybe this doesn't work because there's, that's a very good possibility. Mm. Um, I had a backup and I was okay with all of the, the solutions to the backups. So once you know that and you're like, okay, well, worst comes to worst, I've got that figured out. Right. When you start pushing forward and you're like, okay, I need to understand what is uh, acceptable and what might be coming up. Of course, you're never going to know everything. <laughs> Lots of things are uncertain. I wish I could predict the future. Right. I really, really do wish. I should be working on that, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you, hey, if you write the ebook, I will be on that list. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing, right? So we never know. So the only thing that I knew was to keep pushing and keep pushing. And that's that's where I ended up. Uh, I mean, it's serendipity. It's whatever you want to call it. It's action. <laughs> it's figuring those out. I knew that I couldn't do it on my own. So I ended up finding a mentor um, that that really helped me get past the fear and the not sure and the what do I do with myself and what what am I right now? Um, all those silly questions that will, will make you stop, right? Completely make you stop. Um, I wasn't getting a lot done before I had my mentor. I thought I was. I was like, ooh, networking was scary to me. I would go to a networking mm. event and like be all mousy, which is crazy because now it's like my thing. That's what I love to do. It's very, very different. But because I didn't know and I really wasn't confident in uh, my offerings and who I was and and I was doing coaching way back then. And at the time I was 20 five or 26. And I looked like I was 17. I still got carded for movies, which is nice. fun, right. I mean, I had a baby. I was married for like five years and I, you know, still got carded. I got a baby. Now, I yeah. I, I like could, I pray. Nothing. Yeah, yeah, totally. That's funny. <laughs> so people would look at me like I was crazy. I remember my mentor going, can you wear suits and like red lipstick? So you look a little older, <laughs> Nice. <laughs> which is not me either. So it felt a little inauthentic. So I only did that for a little bit before I went out on my own. But my mentor was really able to sort of show the mirror to me about going, okay, mm. this is what you're looking like. And sometimes that hurts, right? Right. <laughs> Shoot, that is not what I wanted to look like. Right. Um, or he kicked me in the butt and made me do 50 cold calls a day. Right. And mm -hmm. I was like, I don't know. I don't think this is fun. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, but you push through and you start building that confidence and you start going, ah, you know what? I did that. And then you keep moving forward and keep moving forward. And I think uh, that's huge. And that's like you said, when you um, start talking to any successful entrepreneur, and I've interviewed over 200 millionaires, right? Huge net worths. I mean, it's insane, these people, how successful they are. And it comes up over and over and over again, this notion of progress and continuous forward motion. So even if you don't know what you're doing, even if you're scared half the time, just keep pushing forward. And if you can do that, and even if that's the only thing that you dedicate yourself to, right? Oh, just keep pushing forward. Even if you're going to get pushed back, because you will, um, that's going to add up over time. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally got it. And I love the concept about how your mentor showed you the mirror. You're like, I don't like that reflection. Um, and one of the things that you you brought up, though, I, I think that's really cool is that you, you said uh, a, a few times, look, I, I just did that. I did that. I think it's not only that I did that, but I did that and I did not die. 
because mm-hmm. we're like, oh, because for whatever reason, we're thinking, I can't do that. That's going to I'm, I'm going to die. Yeah, at least for me as an introvert, when I go to networking events, I still experience occasionally. OK, often that anxiety about ah, I got to talk to people I don't know. OK, let's get psyched up, Jay. Let's get your game face on and let's go make this thing happen. Um, and yet you survive every time. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, you made that cold call and, and you didn't fall apart. I mean, no one yelled at you. Okay, maybe they yelled a little I have bit. Had, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm really nice. Please. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Totally. I, I know you didn't want me to call you. Please don't treat me bad. Uh, yeah, I, I totally understand. But you still survived. And those are the things that in our head we can imagine so many different things. Now, I one of the questions I get a lot is, Jay, can I do this? Whatever the this is, and I'm sure you get a very similar version. Oftentimes I tell people, it's like, uh, the answer is no, you can't do it. Uh, the version of you in front of me is not capable of doing what you say that you want to do. Now, eventually you can learn to become the person who does those things. And I believe that wholeheartedly. And that's the show me the mirror moment in my world. I, I'm curious uh, for you, what what does that look like today uh, when when someone comes to you and say, hey, Jamie, do you think I can do it? I'm, you know, I'm I'm 18. I'm 36. I'm 63. I'm all these things. All these things are in my way. What would you tell that person? Are you tired of letting good cash flow generating ideas go to waste? Go to cashflowdiary.com forward slash ready to apply for a complimentary. Yes, that means free one-on-one breakthrough session. Take action now. Go to cashflowdiary.com forward slash ready. Again, that's cashflowdiary.com forward slash ready. Before we get back to today's episode of the Cashflow Diary podcast, your host, Jay Massey, has some important insights to share with you. So, when you're listening to all the different entrepreneurs and everything that they have to say, and you you hear their stories, you hear where they've come from, you hear what they're doing, do they sound any different than you? I I don't think so. And that's one of the things I hope you're you're gleaning and getting and, and seeing. You know what? I can do this too. They're just normal people. Just normal people. I mean, here's something that I was taught a long time ago. And I'm going to share it with you in the hopes that when you use it, it gives you comfort in some way, shape, or form, and most importantly, lowers that anxiety that you might feel when you are approaching or talking to or learning to become this new person that's capable of creating, managing, leveraging, and holding and growing uh, cash flow streams. One of the things that I was taught to do was just to always use the phrase, just like especially when related to something negative uh, that I might be feeling. So how this would work is the people I admire have fears just like me. The people I admire, well, they stumble just like me. And you go through that as many times as you'd like. All the things that you might be feeling. The, the people that I admire get nervous just like me. And it helps lower that anxiety that you might have about all the other things that you think that just doesn't happen, but they do. Well, just like me. Anyway, let's get you back over to the rest of the interview. Mm, It really depends on where they are at at the moment, right? So if they say, oh, I'm here and they give me this bit, I mean, you you probably get tons of emails like this too, right? Where people will go, there's, you know, I really want to do this thing, but. (laughs) (laughs) And and usually I'm like, okay, (laughs) you should read the book, Think and Grow Rich. Or, you know what I mean? I give, I give uh, specific resources for where people are at the moment, because like you said, it really depends. Each person is on a different part of their journey. Right. Mm -hmm. And we're all growing as we go. And we can't liken ourselves to, when you look at the millionaire's you're no different, by the way, in terms of, uh, I used to put them on a pedestal, like, oh, they must be smarter, or better, or faster, or whatever it is. Uh, I don't, I don't see that anymore at all. I just see that they're, they're farther along. <laughs> and then you started interviewing them and go, hey, they're people. I, they make spelling mistakes like crazy, by the way. I remember the first email <laughs> I got with tons of spelling mistakes, and I was like, see, look at that, huh? <laughs> right? 
That's hilarious. Well, and that's why I interview them, right? To show that they're human. And I like you, like you said to me before we got on the line, you know, mess ups are good. Like I love, people love it when millionaires mess up. It makes them seem human instead of being this, oh my gosh, they're absolutely amazing. And they make every right decision because they don't, no one does. And so being able to sort of shine the light on that, I think is extremely, extremely important. And that's what I'm trying to do. So when I'm getting emails like this, usually I'll, I'll recommend things. And if I believe that anyone can do just about anything, <laughs> maybe not see the future, um, with enough freaking pushing forward. So if you keep pushing forward and you learn and you grow and you keep pushing forward and you get the right mentors and you keep pushing forward, there is not a lot that you cannot do, given enough time, by the way. I get a lot of people who are like, can you make me a millionaire in a year? Mm. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> how, how, how close are you today? <laughs> Exactly, right? <laughs> if I need to make you a hundred bucks, sweet. Yeah, done. Yeah. Uh, totally. One of my clients made a, a million in less than two years from the start of his business. And so everyone's like, oh, I want that fast track, right? And and if you're going at it that way, I I don't think that's a good way to go. That's only about the money. Right. And and it's not that that's what I was doing, whether it be in corporate or not. Uh, and so to me, that's the whole point of eventual millionaire is to enjoy the journey. It's all about enjoying what you're doing now and making money. Cause I think making money is amazing. I think money, I, I say in my book, I love money. It's totally cool. It's a tool. Uh, it's energy. It flows. It's great. Right. But when we get super attached to it and go like, I'm only okay if mm. right. And, mm. or, or greed mm. and we put money above people, mm. that's where it starts to get icky. Does that make sense? Icky. Icky. Excellent, excellent word. Y'all write that down. That's the technical (laughs) definition we're going to use from here on out. It's icky uh, when you start to do that. Now, I think it's about time that we actually tell them what you do. (laughs) What do you think? A good no. I'll keep it a secret. That's, I have a superpower. I don't want to tell people. What it <laughs> that's is. right. That's right. That's right. You got the decoder ring. They need the decoder ring in order to figure it out. So let's let them in. Get, give me an idea. How did the idea get born? How did it grow? Because it probably isn't the version of what you originally thought, but maybe it is. And and where do you see it going? That's really funny. So when I first started, actually the the site eventual millionaire came to me when I was paying off all that debt. Uh, because I wanted to make it about the journey. So I, I was like, oh, I'm going to start a little website because I'm a huge geek, right? And I was like, okay, great. Um, it had no attachment to anything at that point. I was blogging about getting out of debt for a long time. Um, well, six months. That seemed like a long time at the time. My site <laughs> ended up getting hacked. And mm. I could, and even though I'm a geek and I had backup, my backups were corrupt. And uh, I let mm. it go, which is mm. funny because this was years, this is 2005 before like blogging was cool. I wish I, <laughs> I wish I would have started then. So I stopped for a really long time. And after, like I said before, trying to figure out what the heck I wanted to do, I did a lot of different things. I got a provisional patent. I did project management work for people. I did um, like iPhone apps like all over the place. And I ended up finding something that I, I really liked, which was coaching. And I ended mm-hmm. up coaching people. And then I ended up getting my um, business mentor. Mm-hmm. And so I was an offline business coach for a really long time. But I also lived in the middle of nowhere in Maine. Of a town of maybe two thousand people, <laughs> right? Maine, yes, that's still in the U.S. By the way, people <laughs> keep going. It doesn't count as Canada. It yeah, it, it's close. Close, yeah. Even I'll say that. <laughs> but I think that's the interesting thing, right? So it doesn't really matter where you live anymore, thankfully, right. because I was trying to figure this thing out, and I was doing a offline business coaching, right, with lots of different companies, like uh, landscaping companies, plumbing companies uh, around Maine. Mm-hmm. Funny thing is Maine is the 49th worst state in the U.S. for business, by the way. <laughs> I have an idea what number 50 is. <laughs> mm. Everyone's like, California. No. Yeah, I know, right? They said it together. They're like, yeah, Jay, why do you live there? Because <laughs> if you've ever been, I live in a postcard. That doesn't mean I have to do business here. So that's a whole nother story. But go ahead, continue. Oh, yeah, we can talk about that for a while, too. So Maine, the landscape is not so great for business. And so... I ended up just pulling out eventual millionaire just to sort of learn this online marketing piece on my own, right? And blogging and figuring out what that was. And uh, that's how I started in talking about debt and stuff like that. Funny thing is, though, it was 
totally a side thing, nothing to do with business whatsoever. <laughs> Thankfully, the domain name works well for both, right? <laughs> Thankfully. Um, but I blogged for six months and I was about to give up, like super about to give up. Mm. I told my mentor like, okay, I'm not really getting a lot out of this. I really, he's like, your ROI is like nothing. Yeah, you know, I'm like, yeah, great. <laughs> he like, that's the part I know. <laughs> I know, yes, I'm well aware that this is not helping. I'm spending a lot of time. Uh, and then CNN emailed me. And I was like, hmm, maybe I'm onto something. So I was on their website. They asked me to be on their show. And then I was on Yahoo's homepage all within a week. You know, people from high school going, oh my gosh, is that a picture of you? Uh, you know what I mean? And and I was like, okay, maybe I'm onto something. But I was so sick of uh, blogging because I don't consider myself a writer. Um, that's when I started talking and asking about, uh, well, what can I do? If I don't feel like writing is my thing, but I really, really want to communicate and I really want to build this online platform or whatever you want to call it. One of the people in my mastermind group, two of them have had a podcast. One was uh, Pat Flynn from Smart Passive Income. He had a podcast for right. a while beforehand. And my good friend, Maren Kate Donovan is from a company now called Zirtual, um, which just got funded by Tony Shea for like millions of dollars. She's, she's amazing too. But she had this idea, hey, why don't you interview millionaires? <laughs> I was like- that's a great idea. Right. I don't know any at all, but <laughs> I live in Maine. <laughs> no, there are like none here. <laughs> they don't so, like, come this far. <laughs> they, seriously, there's a couple that live on the coast, but right. they're like John Travolta lives there and that's about it. Right. Um, yeah. So, so trying to like go, this was, that was a huge turning point too, because that, I mean, now that is my brand, right? After interviewing over 200 um, plus millionaires, being able to pull out the key insights from that not only helps everybody that's listening, but darn it, it's helped me a ton also, not only with my network. And I mean, now, I mean, I had people, I had millionaires asking to get into my mastermind group and I had like, and I'm like, sure, of course you can. Great. <laughs> nice. uh, but, but it really set the stage up for a lot of amazing, amazing things. And so, um, yeah, the online presence and I do speaking and coaching and, um, a lot of, I have the book, a lot of really amazing things have just come out of just progressing and trying things out and pushing forward and trying to figure it out at when things don't work. You know, I, that, and that's what I want to say right there is that oftentimes I think uh, having I deal with this frequently uh, with any of our clients is where they're like, hey, Jay, I, I can't write the offer on the piece of real estate because I, I don't know where the money's coming from. I can't do this because I don't have I don't have the property manager. I can't do X, Y, Z because of all these things that I'm projecting in the future. I don't know where those resources are going to come from. And I, I need to know where they all are right now. Mm. I, I, I got to hear you tell us about how you feel about that thought process. And most importantly, what do you think would have happened to your whole brand, the concept and everything, if that's the way you operated? <laughs> I think it was kind of the way I operated before, thankfully, I've learned, right? Right. So I love the analogy of uh, of a car, right? So it's pitch dark. You're in a car. You have your headlights on. You can only see so many feet in front of you. And yet you can get anywhere in the country. Right? Exactly. So having that is huge. I uh, I heard it as A to Z thinking. When you when you need to know every single step, you're never going to get past A. And so being able to go, okay, I'm going out on a limb. I don't know if the branch is going to catch me or not. Like <laughs> be, being able to push push forward through that. I mean, don't get me wrong. It takes some confidence and some skill and some, uh, you know what? Maybe not even confidence and skill. It takes some. Uh, risk you're like what the heck <laughs> <laughs> you only Why live not? once let's well, go for it i yeah. think i think everything uh everything is you can figure out so i uh i always had since i was younger like i always get what i want that was sort of the, the mindset like people used to be like oh you're so lucky and i'm like no i figured out everything you can figure out you have, might have to make sacrifices in some things but but everything you can figure out yeah. And so being able to come from that mindset of like, okay, uh, great, I can figure anything out. Then the real work is figuring out what the excuses are so you can actually get past them or what the obstacles are so you can get past them, right? Yeah. So I didn't even know, like I used to say things all the time that were excuses and I didn't even know until I asked a friend to call me out on some of them. Like I used to say, mm. I don't have enough time all the time. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough time. Ooh. Yeah. He's opening up cans of worms, guys. Ooh, somebody yeah, probably just, good. somebody said, I'm not listening to this part. They, they <laughs> skipped forward. She's going to say something that's going to convict me and I'm going to have to do it. Go, go, go. Tell them. <laughs> 
Exactly. Well, I mean, I, I say it lovingly because mm. I remember, right? And I used to only work 20 hours a week because I had small children. Uh, so in my mind, it was, oh, I'm a mom and I don't have enough time, you know? And, and having somebody call me out every time. There's a great quote, uh, one of my favorites. It's by Lao Tzu. Uh, and it says, time is a creative thing. To say that you don't have time means you don't want to. Wow. And that was like stab in the heart. Like, oh, man. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> like, oh. Yeah. Right? Right. It hurts. Yeah, it hurts. well, that's true. And, and it's, 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 it's more closer to the actual truth is I don't want to make any time. I don't want to actually make this thing a priority because oftentimes that means if it doesn't work, I might be let down and feel discouraged. And we all don't like that feeling discouraged. And heaven forbid should my life, quote unquote, fall apart because that's exactly what's going to happen if I try. So might as well not start in the first place, which <laughs> somehow makes sense. And people are like, and I remember exactly what that sounds like in my own head, except you just said it, right? And the reason why we can say that is because we've had it too. It's not like we haven't. And that's one of the things that I think is huge. And actually, um, one of the habits of millionaires is having this no excuses approach. So, and I love this because it's not as though they don't have excuses because everybody does, right? right. I remember asking Seth Godin about this. And I was like, because it seems like he just accomplishes so much. It's insane. And I was like, so how do you do it? How do you get past your excuses and just do it all? And he goes, well, first of all, I don't do it all. <laughs> yep. he, he goes, nobody can be Superman all the time. Nope. So I liked, I liked the reference, right? Superman. Yeah. So he, ta- he said, sometimes you have to be Clark Kent. So the times when I need it, the times that are important enough for me to get past those excuses, I will, you know, put on the cape and push forward. But there are times in your life that you don't have to. And it's recognizing those moments that really make a huge difference, right? What are those priorities that are going to push you forward? And yes, you do have to step past your excuses for things in order to get anything done. Otherwise, you just stay there. Um, But what are the ones that are most important to you? Right. Just like that Lao Tzu quote, you know, if you don't want to, well, that's fine. Just recognize, okay, I don't actually want this. That's fine. But it's a conscious choice instead of letting your own subconscious run you. That makes sense, too. Oh, I I have this feeling that you and I could go back and forth for hours right now because (laughs) I'm just like. Yeah, that too. And that reminds me of this, Um, which is great, you know, because it just says that there's so much commonality between those who are out there uh, achieving things, creating jobs, going out there to provide clean, safe, affordable housing, changing lives with coaching and services, whatever it is that we've got to offer. Let your genius be known and shine. Uh, And and don't let anyone tell you that you can't do something. Uh, And if they do tell you, remember, you still have the choice of whether or not to believe if they are right. So they can tell you, but that doesn't mean you have to accept it. And at the end of the day, uh, you know, Nike said it best when they said, just do it. Because at the, you, I don't want to die not knowing. And I don't know if that matters to you, Jamie, but that's one of the things that drives me insane. I don't want to die not knowing. What if? What if I would have tried to do one more podcast episode? What if I would have written one more offer? What if, what if that just does not sit well with me? So let's ask this question. What's next now that you've done this? Mm, I love that question. Though I want to say one thing about the Nike quote. Yeah, yeah, one it. of the millionaires, Dan Martell, that I had on, on the show was like, my license plate is J-F-D-I. Ha, and I was like, ha, ha, what does that mean? Ha, ha, ha. Right? And I'm not going to swear, but he goes, just F and do it. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. oh, I love that. Yeah. Right? I totally love that. He, he up-leveled the Nike quote even better. <laughs> totally. So I, I think that's huge. And, and it comes up over and over and over again in the millionaire interview. So I had to say that. So uh, what's next? Oh, there's so much. I mean, that's the thing that I think is so interesting. Someone was chatting me, uh, chatting with me the other day about this. And they're like, oh, you know, I just don't know what to do. And I'm like, there's so much to do. Like, there's not enough time to do it all. There's just so much to do, right? So uh, in the next year, we're talking about doing uh, live in-person events. We're launching uh, a lot of really cool, awesome stuff to try and help as many people as humanly possible. I'm relaunching. I have a millionaire hustlers group that I'm super excited. They're creating like amazing testimonials in. And I'm. it's amazing to know what these people are doing Uh 
and how that I'm a catalyst for that. It's just, I don't know, gives me chills on some of that stuff. And then when you start talking years and years out, uh, I want to be a futurist. I want to actually change the state of education and, and what we're doing right now. I don't mm. think the present uh, educate. I mean, I have two kids, right? And mm-hmm. I'm sending them to an entrepreneurial kid school, mm-hmm. not that has no homework and no grades. And so, but thinking of the people that are coming to me that have gotten NBAs, some people are like, oh my gosh, your content is worth way more than my whole MBA. You know, I'm I'm the college dropout and I've got all most of the people that work uh, with or for us went to college. And then the the other thing is I've got so many people with college degrees who are in my courses. Same thing. It makes no sense. It's like, how come what what do I know that you I thought you learned this in college? (laughs) <laughs> Isn't that why you paid all that money? I mean, well, I, I went to college and I know exactly. I paid a lot of money. That was a lot of my debt. Oh, right? oh the, that's right. That's right. I care about like potency. I care about taking action and getting feedback from real life experiences. And so that's, I, I mean, and that's what I see works with all the people I work with. And so being able to have that and sort of change that and gamify the heck out of it, because I'm such yeah, a geek. I love, yeah. you know, I love right. making that awesome. That's where I'm going for sure. Excellent. Totally understood. So, Here's a, a final question for the person right now who's probably still having the, the, their Clark Kent moment. They're still feeling like Peter Parker. They're still wondering to themselves, can I be a superhero too? I mean, will the tights fit me? Will I look good with a cape? I mean, if they're, they're, they're thinking about this, they know the people that they want to save and help and serve, but they're wondering, can I do it? What would you say to them? <laughs> JFDI. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I had a feeling that was coming. <laughs> so, but you you know exactly what I mean. So we'll stop ourselves a thousand times over. So if there's somebody um, wanting to do something, I will set up a challenge. And so whoever's listening right now, if there's something that you've been wanting to do for a long time, or you aren't sure or whatever it is, uh, break it down into something that you could do for this week. So sometimes uh, people are like, oh, I want to start a business. Uh, I have this great idea and I don't know if anyone will pay for it. And then so they do Mm. research and blah, blah, blah. They do all this stuff. And I go, why don't you ask someone if they'll buy it? (laughs) Mm. It's not that difficult. And they're like, then excuses come. Well, I'm like, well, find these avatar, find people, (laughs) call them up, tell them about it and ask them if they would like it. (laughs) Right. And we get so scared of putting ourselves out there that we don't do it. But I want to challenge everyone listening right now to do that thing that is really, really scary that will tell you exactly whether or not things are going to work. Because as you start moving forward, it's those moments. I, I call them active actions versus passive actions. Passive actions to me are updating my website and tweaking a little thing and doing that. Right? <laughs> oh, but there's the 80-20 rule oh, yeah. <laughs> that makes a huge difference. And oh. I don't have a lot of time, right? So and that's not an excuse. I don't have I, I fill my time with amazing things. So therefore everything has to be potent. Yeah. And everything that I do, I want to be scary almost, right? The the things that really make the difference instead of it just being busy work. I'm not into that. So whatever you can think of this week that is really going to move you 40, uh, move, move you forward tenfold, do that, even yeah. if it's scary. And then you'll be so proud of yourself afterwards. You'll be like, look what I did. And that's what starts to add up to the confidence, right? So I, I think everybody should challenge this week. The week of challenge. Go figure it out. Let us know. (laughs) I I know, right? Oh, my goodness. I mean, the the funny thing is listening to you, I'm like, are we related? No, (laughs) we're not. But. Man, it, it is awesome because we're we're actually headed down to the live events, uh, you know, next year as well. And I'm just like, if you and I were in the same room at the same time, I don't think anybody would leave without their hair being blown completely <laughs> back. They're just like, oh my god, those two are just intense. I cannot. I'm. I'm. Ooh, I'm, I'm yeah. yeah, it would be awesome. But I, I just find it so remarkable that we are literally on opposite sides of the U.S. <laughs> and yet we have so much uh, to say uh, about the same. We have so much to say in the same ways and the same things. And we just come from different places. But at the end of the day, we all meet. Uh, entrepreneurship is the great equalizer. It doesn't care how old, how young, what color, where you've been, what you've done. It just cares that you can go out there and serve people. And that's exactly what you are doing. And I'm grateful that you have decided to invest your time here with us today. Thank you so much for having me on. It's so cool. So let me ask this question, because I'm sure other people are asking. If they want to find more of you, what do you want us to do? Where do we go track you down? 
<laughs> well, I live in Austin now. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Creepy. People. I've I had somebody drive three hours from Houston just to come see me the other day because I was going to an event and my uh, assistant was like, oh, she'll be there. And they're like, okay, we'll drive there. I'm like crazy. Crazy that people right, will do that. Right. But I'm also online, which would probably be easier than driving or <laughs> flying. <laughs> it's faster for sure. <laughs> I know, right? You can check me out right now. Uh, my site is eventualmillionaire.com. All of the interviews are up for free. And so you can check that out. And you can also get the uh, three habits of all successful millionaires. I touched on a couple of them here, uh, but we really go into detail with action items because I care so much about actually mm. taking action uh, with action items all in the ebook that you can get on that site too. Excellent. Thank you again very much for investing your time here with us. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. So great to get to know you better and hopefully we'll meet in person soon. I like that idea. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know what it is time to do. It is time for you to move at the speed of instruction. What does that mean for this episode? It means get over to eventualmillionaire.com right now. Pick a millionaire. Pick two. Pick three. I don't care which one you listen to. I'm guaranteeing you this. You're going to find something that you haven't done that you know you need to do. So get it done because time does not wait for any one of us and it's our most precious resource that we cannot renew so you might as well you took the time to listen here the next step you're like jay i'm scared so what just go do it right isn't that what we just said i hope that you found many nuggets of wisdom in this particular episode i know i've had a lot of fun and it's been great talking to you guys again one more time i look forward to talking to you soon until next time (laughs) 